Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this is going to be the first of two introductions. That's a little bit weird, I know, but I thought I'd better pop in first and tell you what we're doing today. We're going to be turning this old green plastic garbage can into this wonderful tree stump with a face. So that's the purpose of this video, but because I haven't filmed in this room for a number of months, I thought I would do a little tour first. So that's what we're going to do first. If you prefer to skip the tour, you can see the timestamps in the pinned comment below and you can move around the video as freely as you wish. And if not, we'll see you in a second with another introduction. So let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and we are back in my craft room. It's been a while since I've brought you back in here. In fact, my last video that I released for these pine needle baskets here, I think I put that up in April. It wasn't filmed in this room. I actually filmed it in my living room. And that's because we had a bit of a disaster in my house where we found mold in my kitchen ceiling. And by the time we were done investigating, the entire ceiling, one kitchen wall and part of my living room ceiling had to be removed and trashed and then 38 feet of my roof. <laughs> so it was uh, really overwhelming there for a couple of months. And while we were fixing that, everything that we were using in the house that was in our way was thrown into this room. I couldn't even walk in here a couple weeks ago, guys. I would come in and I'd be like, nope, and I'd shut the door. <laughs> I, was, I am not going into that room right now. I just didn't have the strength for it. But thankfully I got the energy back, got everything out of here that didn't belong here, and then I started feeling those old creative feelings coming back, and I got these guys out of the drawer and back where they belong. It's amazing, once you get those creative feeling, feelings back, how much energy comes with it. <laughs> so in a matter of a few days, I did quite a number of things in here. Like, this door used to be on hinges. I replaced it with rollers. I did one for my kitchen as well. If you want to see that, I'll link the video in the pin comment below. It's on, it's on Instagram. I redid this shelf here, sorted through all my yarn. I redid my desktop with dictionary paper and glue and did a coat of varnish on top so it's washable. And added a shelf and a few odds and ends here and there. Now, I don't think I ever brought you on this side before because it was always a bit of a disaster. I did film that tree on video for you guys I think it was 2018 and that's a whole series here on YouTube. I think there's like 35 videos, maybe more in that series. So the plan is when I start building over here again, I will be doing more series like that where you can see me building, adding rooms, uh, making the characters for them and all that good stuff. But today we're going to be building a garbage can tree stump. So this was a green plastic garbage can from Sears and it's about 40 50 years old and it used to fall over all the time when I would throw stuff in it it would fall over if I hit it just slightly it would fall over <laughs> it drove me nuts so instead of throwing out the garbage can and replacing it with a new one I thought I'll just turn it into a stump I'll make the bottom a little bit wider than it than it naturally is and that way it'll stop tipping over and I'll bring you along with me so you can see the process and how it's done. And you can do the same process to any structure that you have, like a milk carton, a glass bottle, a cardboard box, anything. It'll work on anything. In the video, I'm also going to show you how I did the shelf mushrooms and the red cap mushrooms. And everything in here or on here is made with foil, masking tape, and paper towels. All right, guys, we can get started now. So in the next clip, you're going to see the garbage can before I started this process is I'm going to take some foil that I saved from a tree I took down, which is right here. And I'm going to turn this garbage can into a tree stump garbage can. All right, guys, in this video, I'm using leftover foil like I just showed you, but it's this stuff here. You don't have to use the same stuff. You can use any brand you want to. The amount that you use is going to depend on how thick your foil is because the cheap foil gets very, very thin. So you would have to double up a lot more. So I find getting the strong one saves money in the long run. And just make sure it doesn't say non-stick because you need masking tape to stick to it. Get a good masking tape. I don't know if the dollar store brand is a good brand. I get a contractor grade 
masking tape and it sticks really well and any type of glue that you want to use this is just your basic white glue I do mix it with water um, I don't explain that too much in depth when we start off but when we get to the mushrooms here I will explain more about mixing glue with the water and then the paper towels you want to find the cheapest paper towels you can get nothing that's three ply don't get anything with a real quilted design this is a basic Walmart brand and then the paint choices will be totally up to you guys I get all of my paints normally at the dollar store and they're just your basic acrylic craft paint and in this video I'm using black I use brown burnt umber I use some red cream white gray and you can use a clear coat for your mushrooms and stuff like that and I'll talk more about those when we get to the mushrooms all right guys I think that book covers it so let's get started all right so we got our all cleaned up and I've changed my mind a couple of times here I'm not going to use hot glue the thing about building bark up this way once you get the top layer on and dried everything underneath it is solidified it's not going to go anywhere so I'm just going to get some long pieces like this squish them up and get the whole exterior covered in if I want to hold it in place I'll just use my masking tape Alright, I got one more side to do. I'm going to do that off camera, but that's basically what I'm doing. Just building up the bark on the outside. I'll continue doing that. We'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've done all three sides. I got the one side left to do, and that's all it is. You just cover it with masking tape. And I just go from top to bottom. I just make a long strip. So I got all the masking tape on, and... I was just going to put the paper towel on, but then I decided, what if I just added a face? That would be really cool. Anyway, I was just looking up ideas for faces, and two things came up. One is tree trunk trash cans are a thing. I didn't even know that. They're using, I think this would be cement. I think that's what that, that is there. But that's a trash bin, so how cool is that? So we could just go with the basic, you know, the bark, whatever. But yeah, if you look them up, you'll find you'll find a bunch there. Tall, short ones skinny ones, fat ones, they're all there. So what I'm going to do now is just Google real quick tree face. Look at this guy. So I think I'm going to attempt this face on here. I'll give it a shot anyway. <laughs> we don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> so I'm ready to start sculpting now and a lot of this is going to change now that I've decided to add that face and I did change my mind on the face itself. I'm going to use this guy here instead. So I'm going to use his face and I'm going to set him on the side and I'm just going to refer to it as needed. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to start again from scratch just on the face part. Okay, so you saw me adding in the bulk of the face, and now I'm going to add the nose. The thing about a tree nose, you don't have to be perfect because, you know, it's a tree, and you can make it um, any shape that you really want to. It's basically just foil and masking tape at this point, and you can just add in any detail that you want to add in. I did add a little bit more to the size of the nose, and again, that's just crumpled up foil. I just shaped the foil a little bit, and then I could stick it on there like that, and then put the tape on top. And that just gave me a little bit more detail in the nose. The thing about this technique is you can add on and take away at any stage. You don't, have you never gone too far to do any fixing. So don't, you don't have to worry about that. You can do it at any time. In fact, that's how I always build. All right, so I'm just heating up my hot glue gun because I am gonna use the glue gun along the edge here just to hold these in place until I can get them taped down. So I'm just gonna use this leftover foil that I tore off so I don't waste anything. Yeah, 
Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Oh, that looks awesome. I'm really liking that. And adding this part has given me about another two or three inches of depth in the garbage can as well. I'm just going to cover up the foil with the masking tape and then we'll come back and we'll start putting on the bark. So when I'm ready to put the bark on, I just get a stack of the paper towels and then I tear the top and the bottom. And it's important to tear them because you don't want to have straight edges and I'll explain that more as I go along. It's okay on the sides, but on top and bottom you want to make sure those are torn. And for a project this size, I believe I use a half roll. I, I can't remember if it's a half, more than half or less than half. It's around a half. It's definitely not a whole roll. And I do tend to get a large stack, so I would just take the whole roll off and, and get them prepared ahead of time because you don't want to have to stop and do that when your hands are all full of glue. And the glue, I, like I said in the beginning, I do mix it with a little bit of water and that's just to make it easier to work with. And you'll, you'll feel that yourself. When you dip the paper towel into the glue, you have to take the excess off. If it's too thick, it just starts ripping your paper towel. So I tend to water mine down just to make it easier to work with. So I just lay it right on top and I'm gonna fold the dry sides together and then I just pull off the excess glue. Okay, now I'm gonna put the wet side down on my hand. I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and just make sure the other side is wet. I think what I'll do is I'll go right to the top here and when I'm ready to do, do the inside then I'll meet them at the top. But I'm just going to put a little bit of texture in here, not very much. So on the other trees like I showed you, I would actually really squish this up to get lots of texture. But for this one, I think I'm just going to leave it like this and see how it goes. And I don't want air bubbles so I'm just pushing those out. And if you have a really hard to manage area, like a little spot that you just can't get right, don't worry about it. You can always cover it up with a mushroom or some moss or whatever. Okay, so when I put the second piece on, I'm going to overlap them. So when you're looking at it, if it's got really weird wrinkles or whatever, uh, those will show up when it's dry. So whatever position you leave it in to dry, it's going to stay like that permanently. And this stuff is really strong once it's dry. Okay, I'm going to do the bottom now, and this is why I ripped the bottom and top of the paper towel, because if you leave it straight, then you'll see straight edges, right? You don't want that. Okay, so I've come across two issues already that I can see, and one is because I'm doing a very thin texture, or not very much texture, I can see the holes of the paper towel there. Now when I'm doing lots of texture, I can squish that up and really get rid of it. But for this one, I don't want as much texture, so what I'm going to do is just double up the paper towel. And that kind of takes care of it. Walmart used to make this great paper towel that the design disappeared completely, and they stopped using that. I don't know why. So this is a Walmart brand still, but they changed their, I don't know if it's their um, design on the towel or what it is, but yeah, the last couple of years I haven't liked their paper towels as much as I used to. So I just found in the past, working with this stuff, that um, if I doubled it up, it would take care of those little holes. Not always, but most of the time. So when you're overlapping them, top and bottom, you don't want this seam here, you see that one? To be a continual line. So you want to just kind of stagger them out. And again, those lines are very easy to hide if you're using moss. But if you're not using moss, then you just want to make sure you blend those out as much as possible. All right, guys, I thought it was a good time to pop in from the future and just show you in real time what it looks like when it's dried and painted. So if I look real closely, I can see the seam right here and a little bit of a seam right here. But when you stand back from it and you're not looking for a seam, it's not noticeable. Especially when you use multiple colors and you use highlighting and low lighting, you, that can all just blend right in. And I also noticed another wonderful thing. Where is it? See right here? Can you see those holes? That's the paper towel holes and they actually add to the texture of the bark for this color. Now, on my other trees, I have noticed this before and I didn't like it very much, but for this one, I'm actually loving that. I think it, it just adds to the overall look of the texture, so. 
So yeah, everything that you do while it's wet is going to show up when it's dry. And doubling up the layers like I did, it seemed to add to the overall look as well. And this texture here, of course, is just from squishing the paper towels together. So it might seem a little bit tedious when you're doing it, but the end result is really worth it. Okay, so yeah, you just want to stagger those pieces. And I am going to see some of the seams, but it's not going to be that noticeable. A little bit of those holes there. Again, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I just took a little bit of time to do some other things in my house, and I had the fan on it for a little bit. And you can see that it is starting to dry. And when you see it turning yellow like this, that just means that the paper towel is completely dry. And when it's completely dry, you can see the masking tape underneath. So where it's doubled up or folded over, it's going to take a longer time to dry. But that's what that yellow is. Just the masking tape showing through. So we're going to do this front part together. And I've gotten some paper towels. I've got some shorter ones and longer ones ready to go. So when we're doing the face, we're going to be using some uh, smaller pieces as well, of course, so I can get into all the little details. So where I start doesn't really matter. Let's start with the chin there. And then I have these longer pieces so I can get on the sides. Okay, so when you're working on these smaller details, it's going to get frustrating if the paper towel is sticking to your finger. So what I do when that happens is I just dip my finger in the glue, and then I'll use that to get into all the little nitty-gritty details without it sticking to me. You can also keep a little bowl of water beside you and dip your finger in water. That works too. I, I found over, you know, over the course of crafting a few years that mistakes actually add a lot of character because when you have to fix them, you add more and you end up thinking about things you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And, and then you learn too, of course. Mistakes are wonderful things. I'll start from the, yeah, I'll do it that way. So I'm gonna start from the corner of the eye. I'll just hold it with my finger and I'll just pull this down here. Alright, so I just had the fans on it for about, I don't know, an hour and a half or so. And you can see quite a bit of it has dried already. This is all dry. And I did stick it up on top of <laughs> two masking tapes just to lift up the edges because they were full of glue so they wouldn't stick to my little round thing here. It's all dry to the touch, so it'll be easier for me now to work on little details. Yeah, it's all dry to the touch. And I did, here I'll lift you up so you can see. I didn't do it on film, but I just added some paper towel to the inside there. Before I continue, the last clip that I did when I worked on his face, it, it was kind of sad. I accidentally hit the zoom in button when I was adjusting the camera, and so it was a little bit too <laughs> zoomed in for you to see the bottom of his chin and everything. I felt badly about that, but I had to cut out most of what I filmed because it was just too frustrating. Alright, so I just made a ball with some foil and added some hot glue. Again, some hot glue on there just to get it to hold in place. Till I can tape it in and then the top lid which is you know again I just I appreciate that of course I messed around with it for a bit there off camera if I don't like it later I can always change it okay so I think what I'm going to do is add in some brow here just to drop it over the eye a bit because I think the eyes are sticking out, out too much, they're too noticeable. Okay, so I got the eyebrows on it, and it's the same thing I did up here. So the eyes, I am taking smaller pieces, of course. So I kind of go over the lid and then into the, into the eye. So I'm just going to drape it right over. Of course, you can do this any any which way you decide is easier for you. I'm just winging my way along here. Uh, run my finger. I'm going to dip it in glue first and then run my finger along the eyeball. This is the next day, and he's almost completely dry. I did add more texture to his cheeks and underneath his eyelids. All right, guys, here we are from the future, popping in again. I, I noticed when I was editing that I glossed over the fact that I did add another layer of texture here. 
and I didn't film it probably because I was heading to bed or something like that. Um, these videos take me hours and hours, days and days, and sometimes I think, oh, I'll just add something and not turn the camera on, and then I feel bad about it later. All it is, is once that paper towel was dry, I realized I wanted to have more texture in here. So I just added another piece of paper towel, and that's all I, that's all I did. And that's the thing about this kind of technique, you can add that at any time. I could even do it right now. If I wanted to add something here, I would, and then I would just paint over it. You're never stuck, and you've never gone too far to go back and do something again. So he's looking pretty good, guys. I'm pretty impressed with him. Um, looking forward to seeing him with color. I did add a layer of paper towel to the bottom. Now, what paper towel does for the masking tape is it makes it either a paintable surface or a surface that you can glue onto. You can't just leave the masking tape by itself, of course, because it'll eventually just come off of there and it's so slippery that you can't really just add paint or anything to it. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be painting the bottom or adding something to it. I'm just, I'm just not sure at this point, but it's dry now. So we can go ahead and paint this guy. And if you want to see him painted, then you're going to head over to part two. And it should be popping up on your screen here somewhere, guys. If it's not popping up there, then look in the pin comment below. The link is there to part two. Remember, we're painting him, but we're also going to be making these mushrooms as well. All right, so I'll see you over in part two.